Michael Moore is a sack of shit. I just heard on the streets of Belfast here that you supported Hillary Clinton. She voted for the Iraq War. Uh, she is funded by Goldman Sachs. This is not good. Now we have Hillary Clinton and you to blame for this. But you should be out there doing what you can do to get Hillary Clinton elected because the, every minute counts now. I mean, this is a pretty good person. She's a decent person. I believe that she has made incredible uh, changes that the left should embrace and, and we should get out there and get excited about her. Wait a minute. You're telling me that Michael Moore, the guy who built his entire career on railing against Wall Street and corporate America, is now endorsing Hillary Clinton, the ultimate bought and paid for corporate stooge Wall Street insider. The woman whose campaign has received over $58 million dollars from big banks and Wall Street firms. It took Michael Moore just four months to go from this. Now we have Hillary Clinton and you to blame for this. This is not good. To this. I mean, this is a pretty good person. She's a decent person. What happened? to Michael Moore. Whether you love or loathe his politics, Michael Moore's entire shtick for the past 25 years has been to cultivate this champion of the average Joe image. Now he's endorsing someone who literally tells elitists in private speeches that it's important to have a public and a private policy. In other words, it's important to lie to the average Joe. Michael Moore's first film, Roger and Me, the one that made him famous is about how Flint, Michigan was devastated when all the jobs started being offshored thanks to globalist trade policies. Globalist trade policies that Hillary Clinton supported, that she continued to support with NAFTA, that she continued to support with TPP. Critics blame NAFTA for the loss of manufacturing jobs in industrial states including Ohio and Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton helped get NAFTA approved. She held at least five meetings to strategize about how to win congressional approval. She helped the White House block opposition from labor and environmental groups, and she was the featured speaker at a crucial meeting, participants in that event said, quote, her remarks were totally pro-NAFTA. So Michael Moore, the man who cut his teeth on standing up to doctrines of neoliberal globalization, is now endorsing the ultimate embodiment of neoliberal globalization, Hillary Clinton. But wait, that's not all. Michael Moore's next big film, Canadian Bacon, was a satirical denunciation of the ludicrousness of war. It's time to give war a chance. Dead, dead. What are we gonna do for an enemy now? Now he's endorsed a candidate who has ludicrously threatened to go to war with Russia. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. And I'm not done. In Michael Moore's best-selling book, Downsize This, he crucified Nike for outsourcing shoe production and killing American jobs. Now he's endorsing a candidate whose Clinton Foundation received as much as one million dollars from, you guessed it, Nike. Nike also supports the TPP, which will outsource more American jobs. The very thing that Michael Moore supposedly opposes. And I'm still not done. In Fahrenheit 9-11, Moore chastised the Bush family for their close ties to the Saudi government. The same Saudi government that gave $25 million to the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation. The clues in the name, Michael. That's your candidate. But don't worry because Michael Moore has come up with an ingenious explanation to justify his bizarre flip-flop. Why should people support Hillary Clinton, especially people like you who feel like they represent the Clintons themselves, including Hillary Clinton, they represent corporate interests and not the working man and woman? Because I don't think that's where she's at now. I think that she's gonna go in there. I mean, first of all, she's adopted two thirds of Bernie's platform. I don't understand any Bernie supporter who's still angry about this when the candidate has has adopted two-thirds of what he was pushing for. That's right, Hillary Clinton, who is deemed honest and trustworthy by just 11% 
of the US population. The woman who says it's important to deceive people by having a public and a private policy. But you can totally trust her when she says she's going to adopt the populist planks of Bernie's platform. Give me a break. It would be bad enough if Moore was abandoning his principles for a lesser of two evils scenario. But it's far worse. In his new film Trumpland, he's literally sitting in front of giant pictures of Hillary Clinton while calling her his forbidden love. He calls on the audience to stand up and perform emotional odes to Hillary, like they're worshipping dear leader. This wouldn't look out of place in North Korea. He also says Hillary is the new Pope Francis, literally deifying her. If we saw a North Korean comic do a routine that basically involved cajoling the audience to sing the praises of Kim Jong-un, we'd think, God, these poor people can't even chill at stand-up, writes Brendan O'Neill. Yet here we have one of America's best known funny men turning a comedy show into a cultish come therapeutic rally for the possible next commander in chief and no one bats an eyelid. Here's another reason why Michael Moore is a sack of shit. You've probably seen that whole rant where he outlines why the middle class are supporting Trump. You know, that bit that Trump supporters turned into a campaign ad. Trump's election is going to be the biggest fuck you ever recorded in human history. Well, this is what you didn't see. And then, like the Brits, who wanted to send a message, so they voted to leave Europe, only to find out that if you vote to leave Europe, you actually have to leave Europe. And now they regret it. Total bullshit. Even after a massive sustained propaganda campaign, the polls show that only 6% of Brexit voters regretted it. Only 6%. Theresa May, the new Prime Minister who has promised to take Britain out of the EU, is also incredibly popular. Neither of those things are indicators of regret. They all voted to leave, and now they regret it, and over 4 million of them have signed a petition to have a do-over. They want another election. <sighs> the people who signed a petition to have a do-over were the ones who voted to remain in the EU not leave it, you utter fucking moron. So he's trying to argue that the Brexit vote was a terrible decision and that all the people who voted for it are now regretting it. And then he's equating that to Trump supporters. Even though every single example he cites of Brexit regret is disproven bullshit. How many more people do I need to convince? <laughs> Why is Michael Moore now endorsing everything that he spent his entire adult life opposing? Why is he cheerleading for a presidential candidate who embodies everything that he supposedly hates? Could it be because Michael Moore is a hypocritical sack of shit whose entire man of the people persona is a complete fraud. Is it because Michael Moore is actually an out-of-touch, anti-capitalist, multi-millionaire member of the left-wing intelligentsia whose entire fat, putrid existence is wholly dependent on the very same establishment that he used to rage against? And it's a yes. Michael Moore is a duplicitous, corrupted, flip-flopping, elitist sack of shit who couldn't give a rat's ass about ordinary Americans. And that's why he endorsed Hillary Clinton. You supported Hillary Clinton? But you should be out there doing what you can do to get Hillary Clinton elected. If the majority of the people had their say on Michael Moore, I think it would be shut the fuck up.